What's going on, guys? Kyle from Aviator. Today, we're going to go over some carb tuning. Um, there's been a lot of questions as far as cleaning your carburetor, tuning your carburetor, and just overall carb maintenance. Um, I'm going to go through a lot of things, taking it apart, showing you exactly what to do to clean it, um, showing how to use your pop-off pressure, um, and just overall setting the, setting the carburetor up for maximum workability so it works. Um, a lot of the times you don't have to do a whole lot with the carburetor, but this is for you guys who you end up having to clean it or check your pop off. This video is going to show you how to do all of those things and more. All right, guys, here we are. So basic things to work on your carburetor, pop off gauge, simple pump, little gauge. Um, you can get them. So they only go up to about 30 PSI, which is perfect because then it gives you more um, precise measurement um, with a hose on it. That's all it is. Um, flathead and Phillips, and this is a Walbro um, metering lever tool, which I will show you how to use. These are about two, three bucks. Um, great tool to have and uh, really makes it easy. Your carburetor and some WD-40. So we're just going to start by taking it apart. You have two sides you take apart. This side, which has the diaphragm, and then this side, which your fuel and vacuum hose go into. So we're just going to start by taking this apart. And for reference, this is a Walboro WB37 carburetor. If you ever need to get parts, anything like that, they're easily accessible online. Um, and it's actually a Walboro, it's actually on this side right here, um, right next to the uh, fuel, Walboro WB37C. All right, so this is off. There's nothing on this plate, just an empty plate. And then this is your gasket that goes on here. This is exactly how it should look. All right, so this is actually a separate diaphragm, and sometimes these come in separate pieces. Sometimes this is all one diaphragm. So to get this off, just be very careful. Get underneath, so you can see it here. Pull up nice and slow. Your diaphragm is now off. And this diaphragm is a one piece. Now inside of your carburetor here, this is uh, where people get confused. Inside this little hole here, there's actually a little metal screen. Um, you don't need to take this out. Once you remove the other side, you can actually back pressure and it'll shoot the crap out that's in here. You just have to hold your finger over it and I'll show you how to do all of that. So once that's off, we'll move to the next side. All right, can't forget your carb cleaner. Once you remove those screws, just remove this plate. Just pops right off. Now it's very important when you remove this side underneath of here, it might not come off so easy, but on this metering lever here, there's also a little tiny snag right in here. It's actually a little, it's like a little clip that just slides in. When I reassemble it, I'll show you that, but that's very important that you get that inside of that slot. So we'll remove this diaphragm. And when you're looking at these diaphragms, it's important to just check, make sure there's no, there's no holes, no anything like that in these. Um, just making sure that they're complete. Now, once we have both sides off and everything looks good, we're still going to go in and remove even further. There's this half moon shape here that we can remove. Okay. Once you get those two screws removed, you can actually remove this half moon shape. Um, sometimes it requires a little tiny flathead. You can just go underneath, pop it out, just tip it over, and it falls right out. You can also see there's a gasket in here. This gasket can also be removed. A little bit of pressure comes right out. So now once you've got that done, there's only one more thing we need to do in order to clean this entire carburetor. We're going to remove this screw on this lever here. There's a little tiny screw right here. Be careful, there is a spring in here. remove that screw all the way. Got the lever and the nut. Now we have a spring and your actual um, high valve or um, high needle there. Spring and just tip it over. And as you can see, it's all clean. Now, if you're ever told to clean your carburetor, this is the part you want to break it down to. Leave all of this stuff out and soak this piece and this whole carburetor, you can soak it in gas overnight, 
That's okay. Before you do anything else, soak it in gas overnight. So now, it's been soaking in gas all night. All we're going to do now is go through it and use an air compressor, and we're just going to squirt out the carburetor itself. Have the air compressor. We're just going to squirt out each and everything. Make sure you keep your finger over this uh, little screen here while squirting it out. And if you want to clean out that, that screen, the screen I was talking about here, all you do is hold your finger lightly over the top. And on the other side where you took the high, that little needle out in here, you just squirt into that hole. And there it is. The screen is now clean and you don't have to remove it. If you do remove it, it's okay. It is just hard to get back in. Now what we're going to do, since we have everything else taken care of, we're going to start backwards. So this side, the side that we did first, is the side that we're actually going to assemble first. So get your gaskets. You shouldn't need to replace gaskets hardly ever. But if you use ethanol fuel, you will have to, which I do not recommend. Use non-ethanol and it will save you. All right, so let's get this back together. Just getting these barely in there, just just a snug. Okay, now once these are in there, these, these are, you have these screws tight. If these screws are not tight, it can get an air leak in there, which will cause the fuel to drain back, which could cause power loss. So we're gonna go in here, snug those up nice and tight. Okay, that's done. Now we're going to go to the other side and flip it over. And now we need to get the spring and needle back in. So we're going to start on this side, this little tiny screw that we have. We're actually going to reinsert it just barely. We just barely want the threads to catch. That way we can get the needle valve back in. Shouldn't have had that coffee today. A couple turns, so this screw is still somewhat loose. Now, set the spring in. Okay, now the next part, there's several ways to do it, whichever way works easiest for you. I like to take and set the actual needle inside of here. Once that's in there, you can rest this inside of the carburetor with the needle a little offset. Try to get this so you can see it. Once it's in there, push it down, slide the lever over, retighten that screw. You don't have to snug it up yet, just so it gets in there. There we go. And now it's back inside. I will show you this close up. Now that it's back inside, that's what we're looking for. Once you have this in here, now we take this metering lever and with this small little piece here, this little tiny piece on my finger. We're going to slide it on the side of the carburetor. We want it to be touching the top of the, of the lever. So if it's even on that lever and it's not putting pressure and there's not a gap in there, it's good. If it's one way or the other, you can adjust it up or down with a screwdriver. Okay. Now once we have that done, we're going to put our gasket back in. our half moon shape. There is a screen inside of here which you can clean. Just squirt it out with an air compressor and some carb cleaner and it'll be clean. Get that back in. All right, we're getting these back in here now. We're going to snug up everything. You don't want it too tight, just snug. Snugged up. Snug. And snug. Okay. We've checked the metering lever, made sure everything's good, it's perfect. Now for the next part, this is the part that gets kind of confusing. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna push down very, very lightly on this lever here, push down very, very lightly. We're gonna use our WD-40 and where that needle goes, right inside of here, we're actually just gonna spray just a little bit of WD-40. spraying enough just to fill up that hole just so there's a little bit of WD-40 in there. Now we take this and attach it to the fuel line. Okay, get a nice snug fit, airtight fit. 
Now all we do is pump this up. Make sure your valve is closed, pumping this up. Okay, sometimes it needs a reset. Pump up. So this one, for example, this one needs adjustment because this isn't actually pressurizing. So we could try to get it on there a little tighter. Okay. So right now, the pop-off on this one is less than one. So all we're going to do in order to fix that, we're going to simply take this screw back off. This is the hard part. So we're going to remove this screw. You don't have to remove it all the way. We're going to take that spring back out. And a good way to tell is now take this spring and you can see that this spring is very, very short. So normally you can just order new springs to your correct PSI and the correct PSI is between about 16 and 19 PSI. It really varies, but I would say 18 PSI is a very good starting point. So for this one, we're just gonna stretch this spring out a little bit. There we go, we got some more stretch in there. Set the spring. And normally you would use a new spring and not just stretch that spring because eventually it will get wore down and you'll have to redo it again. And I can already feel the pop off is going to be slightly high, which is okay. But now we have the ability to test it again. So we're just gonna push this down very lightly, get some WD-40 into the hole, just enough to fill up the hole. And now, and you can use WD-40, you can use carb cleaner, you can use anything. I just choose WD-40 because that's what's over there. All right, same thing, pump. So right now we're still going and it's past 30 PSI, which is way too high, but you can keep pumping. That was your pop off. If you watched where it popped off, it was just above or just under 35, which is way too high and your motor won't run. All you would have to do now is either compress your spring or cut the spring very, very lightly. So that's how you adjust your pop off to get to the correct pressure. Now, this is, say this is at 18 PSI, you're good to go after doing all of that. Now we just reinstall everything. This is the very important part. Under here, there's this tiny little nipple and there's this little groove here. This nipple needs to go into the groove. So we're gonna slide it into the groove, align the gasket, and that's it. Put this gasket back on. Put these little screws in and get them snug. All right, your carburetor is now good to go back on your motor. Once it's back on your motor, we have to set these screws. Every time you take this carburetor off, you should make sure that these do not move. So in order to do that, you're gonna need a flathead. All right, to do these screws, we always wanna make sure that they're bottomed out first. So this one was turned up. We're gonna turn it in very nice and slow until you start to feel it stopped. You can make sure it's there, turn it, and it stops. That's all the pressure you need, just a little bit. So once that one's all the way in, we're gonna check the low. Turn it. Nice and slow. Stopped. Once that's stopped, we're gonna turn it out one full turn from all the way in. So from there, we're gonna go half, one, blue set at one. Now for the high, we know it's all the way in. We're gonna go one turn out. Half, one. Do this while it's on your motor, so while you're putting it back together, you don't bump these. And that's it. That's everything you need to know. All right, guys, we finished the carburetor. Everything is done. We cleaned it. We checked the needle valve height. We did pop-off, showing you how to adjust pop-off, and we cleaned it. So. Having the ability to do these very, very small things is super important. And honestly, if your motor's running, don't touch it. If, if it's still running good, don't even worry about it. The only time you should have to adjust these settings 
is if you're at altitude or if you just cleaned the carburetor. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to contact us. That's why we're here. And thanks for watching.